uh, once you run it through Imagine, you just edit a full wedding in a couple of hours. So you made $3,000 in two hours instead of a week. Workflows is a podcast about saving you time and money in your photography business. As a photographer and content creator who struggles with dyslexia, colorblindness, introversion, and anxiety stemming from years of being bullied as a child, workflows have been my rock. I have workflows for every aspect of my life, and that's why I'm so happy to bring you Workflows, a podcast presented by Imagine. As a company dedicated to saving you time and money in your photography business, it makes sense to enhance and expand the conversation to all things workflows. Tune in and subscribe to hear stories, strategies, and tools that could be your rock. Hear from people just like you. Put the camera down for a little, connect the headphones, and get to work with workflows. Get in on the conversation by joining the Imagine community today. Imagine the possibilities. Braulio Rocha is a Montreal-based wedding and bar mitzvah photographer. New York Times wrote a full-page article about Braulio, calling him Montreal's bar mitzvah king of photography. Braulio is a fascinating person with a fascinating career path. As shared by the Montreal Gazette in a piece titled From Janitor to Entrepreneur, a Montreal immigrant success story. He is a father of two beautiful girls and is married to the love of his life, Sonia. Braulio is a speaker, educator, and motivator. Without further ado, here is my conversation with Braulio Rocha and a secret guest, surprise guest, that caught us off guard, but was really cute. So we went with it. Enjoy the show. How does it feel to experience a trade show, uh, not only just a trade show, but one of the largest U.S. trade shows um, from the perspective of being in a booth? How does that feel? It was, it was pretty dope. It was my first time in WPPI. I've, I've, I've heard about WPPI forever. And, yeah. and uh, the, the fact that I went to my first WPPI and uh, was able to speak in a booth with people Mm-hmm. Special, you know, a booth of specialists. Imagine AI, who, uh, who workflow has helped me so incredibly, and being able to share that with with other people, it was just surreal, really incredible. Awesome, yeah. The 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 hustle and bustle, like the 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 how busy it gets there, is a little gets a little intimidating at times, and you handled it very well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was it was great to see you uh, talking to everybody, and um, and just it was fun for you to hang out. Uh, and yeah, I think we were, for the most part, we were on opposite sides of the booth when you were in the booth because it's like, yeah, you know, like there's so many, so many people coming from different directions. You just got to split up yeah. and, and, and conquer where you can. So people are curious, definitely just like, what is this? Yeah. And how is the rest of the show for you otherwise? Cause I think you, you got to go to classes and stuff too, right? Yeah. I went to, I went to a couple of classes. I went to a couple of uh, photo walks. I assisted a few, a couple of photographers, friend of mine. Uh, friends of mine, I was curious because next year um, I want to uh, host a couple of classes. I want to mm-hmm. host a couple of workshops. I want to do a couple of photo walks. Um, I really want to dive in uh, and show people the potential of the the bar mitzvah and the bat mitzvahs market. I mean, there's a lot of talks about weddings and yes. yeah, everybody talks about portraits and weddings. Nobody talks about anything else. And I'm 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 known for uh, bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. I travel. Right. Uh, for bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, and that's something I want to explore next year because it's it's tremendous potential, and I don't think a lot of photographers know about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I've noticed over the years it's definitely a topic that is rarely talked about, uh, or like a genre, not a topic, but because topic wise, it is kind of like weddings and other events, but like yeah, genre wise, like that specific niche is rarely, rarely talked about. Um, at at most trade shows, actually. So yeah, it would be good to see you get out there more and and talk um, about what you do, why you do, how you do for those specifically. Um, so because they they it, they come with their own unique challenges, you know, like the yeah. the way synagogues are lit are going to be somewhat different than how you know a church might be lit or how a regular wedding venue might be lit, you know. So um, you've got your own unique challenges that you have to worry about. Yeah, there's definitely challenges, but I find it, <clears throat> I find it easier than weddings. I shoot a lot of weddings and mm-hmm. a lot of bar mitzvahs, 
and I shoot a lot of weddings in the Jewish community. So I'm, I, I you know, even there, I can see the difference between uh, shooting a wedding and shooting a bar mitzvah. Yeah. Uh, the bar mitzvah parties, they're, they're, they're big parties, as big as weddings, mm -hmm. uh, but the workflow is a lot easier. Um, and when we talk about business-wise, we're business owners, right? We want to make money. We want to support our families. Uh, the, the, there's a potential of making more profit with half the work, half the headache, half the stress, the stress, half the anxiety yeah. on a bar mitzvah than on a wedding. Right. And the, the workflow also, the editing part, it's, it's 10 times faster. And I would imagine it's 100 times faster. <laughs> you can literally, you can make as much profit or more profit mm. on a bar mitzvah um, as you have in a big wedding uh, with a lot less work. And people don't know this. And, and it's, it's tremendous potential out there. And I definitely capitalize from it. I'm, I'm sure through this conversation, we're going to hear more about that. Um, I, so I, I've... I've been bar mitzvahed, <laughs> um, and I've uh, uh, I was at the time obviously I was thirteen when that happened, but I was yeah. photographed by um, at the time like the the go to person in my area in New Jersey where I live, and um, he and his wife they were a, they were a team and they both use Hasselblad, so my my bar mitzvah was photographed on beautiful Hasselblad slide film, yeah. which technically it's not film but slides, um, and uh, gorgeous gorgeous stuff. Um, anyway, so I, I, as, as a professional myself, and as I've basically tried every single genre of photography over the many, many years, uh, I have photographed a couple of bar and bat mitzvahs. And I know that from the synagogues that I've been to, they actually prefer you to not, to not hear a sound. They don't want to hear your camera click. Um, yeah. and, uh, so I, when I did it with a mirrorless, I had to do it on silent mode. When I was doing it with a DSLR, I actually put in a blimp. Um, so that way it would help. I know, I'm sure not every synagogue cares, but certain ones, I'm, you know. Yeah, there's, there's some synagogues that are very strict. Yeah. Um, so let's, let's actually dive in. Speaking of things you do for the photographic process, um, what is one thing you do for your photographic process, the part, in the camera, behind behind the camera, when you're actually taking the pictures, um, that saves you time. I turn off the lights, <laughs> ambient lights. Okay. Whatever ambient light. If I go to a bride's house, she's getting mm -hmm. ready, or I go, or, you know, I'm I'm shooting the the uh, a bar mitzvah, right? Mm -hmm. uh, during the ceremony process, I I don't interfere. But when when I do the portraits after the you know the the sequences, ceremony brunch. And then we do portraits. Mm -hmm. When I do the portraits, the family portraits and the boys' portraits, we do we stage a little bit. I turn off all the lights. I go to a bride's house, getting ready, or groom's house, getting ready. Lights off, all of them. Interesting. That's the first thing is set because yeah. you have lights coming from the ceiling, right? Yeah. The warm light, the tungsten light it creates shadows under your mm -hmm. nose, under your, you know, and and the temperature gets all mixed up because you have a mixture of the tungsten with the window light, and it's an it's it's a um, white balance nightmare that takes mm -hmm. forever when you're editing. And that's why a lot of photographers just go and do black and white. Black and white is not my thing. I don't like black and white that much. So it's the, and my style is like the dark and moody and yeah. dramatic. So yeah. that's the first thing I do. I get to a house, lights off. Yeah, that definitely, I'm sure that can, that helps get you even closer to that, to that point of, because your editing style is really gorgeous, especially for bar and bar mitzvahs. <laughs> like, you. I've never seen anything like it before. Um, in Appreciate in it. you know, growing up in that in that community, you know, I've never ex seen that before. So, um, uh, I I that it totally makes sense to to fully take control, take out every oh, every nice. bit of the equation, so you are in complete control with whatever lights you you bring into the into the scene, um, to yeah. be able to get you for to that dark and moody look that you have that yeah. you've built over the years. Yeah. Um, yeah. fantastic That's, I love it, that. it's funny you said that um, the, the the New York Times article comes from an, uh, an interaction between me and the reporter I didn't know it was a reporter shooting a bar mitzvah mm. and the the New York Times reporter was the boy's uncle right interesting and when we do the portraits we start the portraits I'm telling the guy there the janitor turn off the lights on all the lights off and he's sitting behind me and he gets up and he says excuse me I'm I'm, I'm a reporter for the New York Times I follow photographers around and I know for a fact that for for pictures you need light, and you're turning your lights off. What kind of photographer are you? This is my nephew, huh? 
I, I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I looked back and I told him, well, uh, sit down. Uh, you're going to learn something today. Because <laughs> Enjoy <am>. the show. <laughs> Enjoy the show. I am light. So that's why I turn the lights off. I have my lights. Turning the lights off, I have total control of, of ambient light. And, and I create the light. And the light tells a story. Light is not just to yeah. uh, expose a subject or backlight. Light literally tells the story. That's how I approach the, the bar mitzvahs. That's so good. That's so good. Um, you know, the controlling the light is actually something that uh, in an episode previously with Charmy Pena, she actually said something very, very similar, different, actually, than what you said about turning off the lights, but rather um, a lot of the wedding venues that she shoots in New Jersey, where she she also lives in New Jersey, um, they use certain LED bulbs that look horrible on camera. And she actually mm -hmm. she actually has her wedding venues, when she, whenever she's shooting at these venues, she has them swap out the light bulbs for her. So, like, they actually change the bulbs and the chandeliers and stuff for her. Like, she's at the level where she... She she gets those requests handled, but <laughs> but um but yeah. So, so in like, the reception hall, I do the opposite. Reception hall, I want ambient light, right? Uh, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I, I go to the D D DJ as his lights pointing at the right. Mm -hmm. So I go to him and I say, look, the first dance. I don't want to interfere with your light shows. You know, couples pay a lot of money for that. Yes. On on the dance floor, do me a favor. Point all of your lights, um, on the first dance, a couple first dance. Point all of your lights towards the couple, uh, 5,500K, as max power as you can. <laughs> That's a good, That's yeah. The opposite. Yeah, you're getting nice, nice, uh, you know, spotlight type effect to like give yeah, them like they're on exactly. stage type of look. Yeah, uh, exactly. Nice. You put your camera at F8, ISO 100, you get those star bursts. Yeah. You know, yeah. you add a light behind you with a, with a, a honeycomb so that the light doesn't spread. And you have this beautiful dark around them, spotlights, and it's just a unique, 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 unique. Awesome. Um, let's move into the business side of things. So yeah, I specifically want to hear, because as you said, so much of the industry is focused on weddings. Like even the, our podcast, you know, a lot of times we have people come on, uh, actually the episode before you with Ashley Jean, she's a personal brand photographer. So that was a nice break from weddings. But um the question I'm about to ask you, I'd love to hear specific to bar and bat mitzvahs, um, is what is one thing that you do for the business that saves you time or money? And not imagine, we're going to get to imagine down the road. Yeah. <laughs> um, anything else in, um, in your business that saves you time or money? Well, you know, setting up bar mitzvah packages aside from, so everybody has wedding packages, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then I do headshots, I do corporate headshots and the I don't do a lot of family ports. I don't like doing it, but occasionally I'll do it. And you set up a price. There's a session fee and then per, per image. And then you're doing person sell, right? You sell the prints, you sell canvas, whatnot. For bar mitzvahs, uh, we would waste a lot of time bidding around the bushes, the pricing and, and whatnot. So, you know, in, in, in the city that I live in, Montreal, I'm the most established bar mitzvah photographer, right? So the same way your previous guest, you said she can go to a hall and she's big enough that they will do whatever she mm -hmm. says. On the bar mitzvah, I, I set up my prices. It's by far the most expensive in the market. Um, but the, the, like you said, the, the, my images are, I will never say my pictures are better than, than others are to subjective, but they're different, right? right? My images are very different yes. from, from anything that anybody else says. So, uh, you know, in my head, I was like, I'm a business owner. I need, to, uh, you know, I provide, I'm the sole provider of my family. Uh, I have two daughters. I want to put them in good schools. So I have to value myself. Uh, I have to value my art accordingly so that I can uh, have a, a business that thrives, that survives, that maintains, and also give my family uh, a good and comfortable life. So I created bar mitzvah packages and I priced them really high. Uh, and that saved money right away. The prices are on my website. You know, parents go on my website, they see, they see the prices and right away, uh, if, if I get uh, um, um, emails through my website, it means that they saw the price. They want to move forward. That just saves me so much time with people calling. How much do you charge? Mm -hmm. Can you do better? Can you do a discount? Because you know prices are on the website. People go to the website. The prices are there. If they proceed to contact me, uh, that's out of the way right away. One less phone call. One less meeting. Um, and then the prices. And then when I set up the prices, not just about pricing. It's also about product. So I have three bar mitts of three bar mitts of packages. The cheapest one has no products. It's just me. I go take the pictures, put everything on the gallery online. 
And then the other two, because I'm I'm big in products, right? I I upsell a lot. I I you, there's so much money you can make out of uh, you know selling prints and selling albums. Uh, and so so I have the other packages who have products, uh, who have canvas, who have prints. I want people to print their images, right? And it's important also from the from a business perspective, like when you create those beautiful bar mitzvah pictures, and then a family puts that on a wall on their living room, right? They mm-hmm. have a braulio right there on the wall. Then their friends and family come on, come over and they see, wow, look at that! Like who, you know, who did that? Who took that? You know, so it's it's basically free marketing, other than just having images uh, on a computer in a file. It's not even I don't even consider it to be a picture uh, if it's not printed, right? So setting up uh, the packages uh, in a way that allows me to uh, sell products. Uh, and having them on my website, it just says, so people call me right away and tell me, Brawley, I want package one, I mm. want package two, I want package three. Uh, or or I, I have, by now, it's something that you build up, but by now I have a reputation of not negotiating. People don't, any, people don't do that anymore. Can you do better? Can you, <laughs> you, you know how the community works, right? Yeah. Can you do yep. negotiating? Can you do better? They don't do that anymore. Mm. They go to the website, they see the, the packages, they see the ones that have albums, that don't have albums, that have, Canvas don't have canvas prints enough prints. They right away know which package they want. So when they call me, it's because they want to hire me and they know which package they're gonna have. Boom, done. Nice. Yeah, there's there's this that ongoing debate in the fo- photo industry for all genres of photography. Of do you put your pricing on your site? Do you not put your pricing on your site? And the interesting thing is, I think it all the answer comes down to depends on on the location, because certain locations. Um, if you put it on the site, it could backfire. And on certain locations, like you're finding with yourself, you put it on a site and it's working for you. So um, I think that's a great, it's a great thing. Like my advice would be to people is, is to test it. Yeah. Put it on your site if, you know, and see if it reduces the bad leads you get. Um, and if it doesn't, you know, then you take it off your site, whatever it is, you know, but you have to test yeah. everything you have to test always. Yeah. Um, so I'm a strong believer of putting it, putting the prices on the website because mm-hmm. right away it, it'll, you know, you're not going to waste time, uh, or even people, not just your time, you know, potential uh, clients. Yeah. Uh, time. They look at the prices right away and they're going to see if 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 this is good for them or not. Right. You're saving them time. Also, okay, this is not for me. I'm going to right away go find somebody else. Or yeah, okay, I like the price. I like the images. I'm going to give this guy a call. Yeah. They already know the price. You don't have to go. Be talking about that anymore? Yeah, and you mentioned that you you still offer, even though you like to upsell to products, you still offer a basically a gallery only um, option. How yes, popular is that package for you compared to the it's, others? It's uh, it's it's not the most it's not the most pop- actually the Good. most popular package. So this, I have four packages, right? The cheapest one I have is not even me as a photographer. So I basically charge a premium to have me as a photographer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's the cheapest one is an associate photographer, uh, also a gallery, you know, uh, not everybody can has a budget. Uh, they do have a budget, but the, the, as you know, photography sometimes is not as valued as the flowers or the caterer or the DJ, right? Right. Uh, so people, some people are just not willing to spend a lot of money in photography. So I have a, I, I created, uh, this This was big for me as, as a business owner, um, once you establish your credibility as a photographer and, and you create images that really stand out, uh, I, I decided to to charge premiums to have me as a photographer, and it, it does something to people's head. And so you know, it's it's exclusive. Okay, no, I want I want Braulio. I you know, I'm going to pay more to have him. You know, because you know it's him. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just psychological. You know, yeah. Um, and the bar mitzvah is extremely popular. Is the one. Uh, that has uh, an album. That's the most popular package that I have. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, we've talked about the photographic process. We've talked about the business process. Now, again, w- not imagine, because we're going to get to imagine down the road, but what is one thing you do for the editing part of the process that has saved you time? Well, creating my own presets, for sure. Uh, I, I made a post in my group about it. I, mm-hmm. I did a reel on my Instagram about it. Uh, no judgment to those who use other people's um, presets mm-hmm. uh, or don't use presets at all. You do you. You do what's best for you and for, right. for your business. Uh, you know, it's a, it, it takes time to be able to have the confidence uh, to create your own presets, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, over time, I was using other people's 
presets and then I was tweaking here and there. And then when I was ready, I created my own presets. Uh, they're adjusted to the way that I shoot. Um, I have a preset uh, for the images that I shoot natural light only. I have a preset for the images that I that I use natural light blended with off camera flash with a lens wide open. I have a preset for the ceremony where I'm using flash, so it's, you know light is different. I have a preset for the party pictures where I'm using off camera flash to light up the reception room, and and I'm shooting uh, you know f6, f7 because I want that image to be like very contrasty, very vibrant. So I created a preset for that. So having presets was the number one step to, uh, that allowed me to really, and the presets that adjusted perfectly to, to the way that I shoot and to each part of a wedding day or a bar mitzvah day. Uh, and it just made everything so much faster. And then uh, in Photoshop, eventually, there's always um, uh, a few pictures that I grab. You know, those images that you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, those you bring to Photoshop, you add a bit of juice. Um, in Photoshop, creating my own actions also, uh, it just made work so much faster. So yeah. Much faster. So create your own presets when you're confident enough. And if, if I'm not a Photoshop specialist at all, mm -hmm. a lot of people message me, uh, can you edit my images? I'll pay you. Would you teach me how to edit it in Photoshop? And I refuse. I'm not knowledgeable enough for that. I just created actions for the way that I shoot, created presets for the way that I shoot. And it's just my life is so much easier. Yeah. Yeah, it's it it is amazing that like that presets and actions can really enhance your 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 productivity, um, yeah. and then on the preset side, once you combine it with <laughs> with, with Imagine, which we'll get to, um, just yeah, like get, right, it's a whole different level. The... Yeah, it's a whole <laughs> different level. Because even if, even a preset, when you shoot volume, you still get flooded with work. Yeah, and we're gonna get there. But when I found out Imagine, I I, I felt I was breathing underwater. Like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, even with presets, yeah. No, we're gonna get there. Awesome. Pardon the interruption, but I wanna take a moment to say that we at Imagine appreciate you. That's all. Now, back to this incredible conversation. We're gonna do something fun that uh, I, I, I've been doing lately and I have a blast with this. So, pick a color. I will go with green. Green. I think the last two episodes were both green. That's interesting. Okay. I'm going to shuffle through the deck and you're going to tell me when to stop. Okay. Stop. Okay. Your next question is. Okay. If you were given $1,000 to spend on your closest friend, what would you get them? My closest friend? Mm-hmm. Is, is my brother-in-law, and he's Jewish, actually. Even I'm not Jewish, but my brother-in-law is Jewish. So I would, I would get him a book to start with. He loves reading. What would I get him with $1,000? Well, what, what, what would the book be on? Maybe it's a first a edition Jonathan book. A Jonathan Sachs book type of book. He loves, the, he loves Jonathan Sachs. Um, I actually met him. Such a nice guy nice. Uh, before he died. Um, I would I would help pay him a trip to Israel. He's been dying to go to Israel, so yeah, nice. That's, what I would do. Yeah. that's that's a great one. Israel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I would do. Cool. I like that answer. Um, and he can read that book on the on the on the plane. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Get him the book, and then I was shooting an event here in Montreal. Jonathan Sachs was uh, the guest of honor, and he he was a new. He was he just launched a new book, and he was signing the books. So I actually got my brother-in-law a signed book from Jonathan Sachs. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Back to the workflows. What is <clears throat> one thing you now that you do after a session? It's all done. You're now ready to deliver it and so on. What is one thing you do after a session that has increased business? What is, I do more than one thing, but like if, if safety first, right? So you get home, it's triple back up everything, right? Especially weddings and bar mitzvahs. Doesn't, mm -hmm. It's not going to happen again. Uh, it's very important that people know that. And then, yep. and then I'll grab uh, uh, a few pictures, like highlight pictures from the day, and I will edit right away and send it to the couple. Mm -hmm. I, I find that that uh, goes, goes a long way because two, three days after the wedding, they will post on their social media and their friends, it's still fresh. They're still dancing. It's been three days, but they're still dancing. They're still hangover, you know, and the pictures are already there. Uh, so that's, that's something that works a lot. Uh, there's something that I do during the weddings. It's, I'm, I'm going to, I talk about this in my workshops. 
uh, that that also you know definitely it's during the event, not after. But it it helps you know getting you out there and helps your business being known, which is during an event. I do a lot of stories, and, and as I'm I'm videoing and I post the stories right away. I tag the vendors on the stories, and then the vendors share your story, and then you do this consistently. Uh, your name starts getting recorded in their brains, and when people go to them and say, "By the way, do you know any photographer?" They're gonna uh, mention you because you share their products on the event day through your stories. So this is also something I do. And if I don't have, I don't have time to do it, I will definitely do a lot of videos uh, uh, and then post them as soon as I get home. Um, definitely uh, take a lot of behind the scenes videos, uh, take a lot of videos of, you know, table setups and the flowers and uh, uh, is this okay? Yeah. <laughs> come, you want to come sit? That is on the phone. You got to be quiet, okay? <laughs> Say hi, Scott. <laughs> so I'll do that. And then a lot of behind the scenes. Uh, people love, even clients, they love seeing behind the scenes process. They, li- they love seeing, uh, you know, the lights and how you do that, especially you, with the type of work that I do. And people go, how, how, how? And you show a little bit of behind the scenes. I find that brings a lot of uh, traffic uh, to my social media. Awesome. Awesome. Now, this one... In this next question, I'm going to ask you to look down at your business from a 30,000 foot view. Can you share <laughs> an outlined breakdown of your workflow from lead to delivery? Right. So uh, people reach out after they go to my website. So, you know, immediately I know that I'm very likely getting that contract. Mm-hmm. Invite them over to my studio. Uh it's very important because in my studio I have prints all over the walls, printed all. I have big canvas all over the wall. I have album samples, you know. So people come over, um, try to upsell. You know, I want them to see the album, to see the products. Um, younger generation not so sure about albums, so I need to show them so that they see the potential of having those prints. Uh, you know, I have a Scotch bar, coffee, food. You have to create a good environment uh, for your clients. You know. You can just ask them to spend money and you're not like giving some kind of a good experience, a luxury experience, right? Uh, you know, sign the contracts. Um, and then when the wedding is done or bar mitzvah, make sure I, I triple back up everything. So I have the work hard drive. And then I have a server that I built myself. And then I have a cloud where I put all the images. Uh, you never know what can happen. Um, and yeah, the, you know, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Nice. Um, I don't know if you were told this, but you know that Imagine's working on our own backup solution. Oh, I know. That's that's good. Yeah. Because I use uh, backlays and sometimes just Mm -hmm. so complicated. I wish there was something more simple. Yeah. That's big news. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've we've, we talked about it um, on a on a webinar not too long ago, uh, but we haven't made much of a splash yet. And um, yeah. It's it's in the pipeline. It's gonna be uh, it's yeah. gonna be nice. Should definitely do it. I was just talking. You you're getting into capture one too, right? That was capture one's in the works as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, lots of cool stuff. Um, Good stuff. Yeah. Now I want to ask you, as somebody who is using AI in your mm-hmm. photography business, um, what does the future of AI in photography look like to you? Well, to me, it's exciting. Uh, you know, obviously progress uh, new things that come out, come come into uh, the way we we used to doing things a certain way and then you know evolution comes in and you have to adopt and ca- that can be scary sometimes right but it's progress and you can't stop progress so you can either be chewed by progress or roll with it and take advantage of it i i'd rather take advantage of it which is what i do with imagine ai i think i think ai when properly used is going to be it it's already a wonderful tool for creatives like myself. Um, I don't think that uh, being a you know, wedding photographer, uh, wedding bar mitzvahs, event photographer, um, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of fear that AI will take over, uh, robots will take over, whatever. I don't, at least in what I do, I don't think that's possible because um, AI, as advanced as it is, it's, it's still objective. Uh, it doesn't have that uh, emotion and subjectivity that we as humans have. But on the editing side, it's certainly a plus. It's unbelievable 
um, how fast and accurate, imagine for example, how fast and accurate it is. It changed everything. Like I, I didn't even know if I was going to make it to WPI because I had so many weddings and bar mitzvahs to deliver four weeks before my trip to WPI. Um, and I'm, I was down here, you know, as you, you can see the stairs behind me, my house is upstairs, my office is downstairs. And I was here all the time. I was just taking my daughter to daycare. And then I would stay here until 11 o'clock in the evening, even with my own presets, even with my uh, actions, you know, it just, it accumulates in 2022 was the busiest season ever. Um, and then it was my wife, actually, Sonia, she was the whole time, try this, try, try, imagine. I keep seeing these ads, imagine, try, try. And I was a bit of school, I'm 47, a bit of school, you know, was, what is this AI editing for me, you know, it's, it can get scary, right? So, so I tried, she insisted, I tried. And uh, I, I, mind blowing immediately. Like, wow, what just yeah. happened? So, so just added a whole party. And <laughs> yeah. So my next question to you is actually going to be, how did Imagine impact your life? And it sounds like that uh, it gets you out of your 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 editing cave. <laughs> oh my God, it does. Like, I I I, I felt it, it changed so much. I felt compelled to. I called my videographer and I said, "Listen, we have to do a video." And we have to show this to the world because this this really changes lives, uh, you know. So now I have a software that edits the way that I edit, which is super important, right? I have my presets. I have a, a pre I have a way that I edit based on the way that I shoot. I think she fell asleep. Are you falling asleep? I'm falling asleep, baby. It's okay. Um, <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> I'm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's been sick with this ear infection. Um, so I, there's, there's, you know, it's very important to edit the way that I edit and Imagine does just that. Once you teach the software how you edit your pictures, it does everything for you, lightning speed. So now, the, you know, while Imagine is doing it for me, I literally get to spend time upstairs with my family and help because we have another baby and my wife needs help. And it's, I, I know she was like stressed and mental health plays a role so now i can help her and i i we, we do things together we go on dates <laughs> me and my wife i have be seated and go on dates because i i managed to edit things to imagine ai i managed to edit eight weddings and two bar mitzvahs with the bar mitzvah party in three weeks when i used to take a week and a half for one wedding yeah. because life takes over you know you don't just hear edit you know you stop you go do your thing so it accumulates right I did the whole thing, eight weddings, two bar mitzvahs, in like three weeks, three and a half weeks. What's your um, What's your go-to uh, date date night look like with your wife now? My wife? Yeah. Uh, a good restaurant, good wine. Uh, we, we're blessed. We live uh, in a good area, really close to downtown. Downtown Montreal is very vibrant. It's the typical big, nor big city, North American city. Uh, and we live close to the city, so I, I don't club anymore. <laughs> so you know a good restaurant good good wine uh you know um yeah that's awesome. what we do now we're parents now we don't have the energy yeah. to go dancing and yeah. <laughs> fantastic so um where can listeners learn more about you connect with you and of course see your incredible photography thank you for your kind words well definitely my social media um at rushstudio.ca Sorry, at Russia Studio in Instagram. That's R O C H A. I think in English you say Roca. In Portuguese we say Sh. Uh, so Russia Studio. Uh, so that's R O C H A Studio, only one word. Uh, and my Instagram, if you go to my reels, it's full of behind the scenes. I love sharing behind the scenes. I have no secrets. You know, go ahead and, and uh, take, it out, take it all in and then adjust it to your way of shooting. Uh, my final work on, on the grid with my pictures. I have a YouTube channel also. Uh, you can find me at Brali Rocha. And then uh, the group that uh, you're, 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 you're a part of and you're, you're an admin and you help a lot of people there too. People ask questions, I have no idea. So Scott, please come. <laughs> I tag you right away. Uh, which is the Wedding Photography Education a Guide for Beginners. Uh, we, we are going 6,000 strong now. Uh, and then, and then uh, I'm setting up my workshops um, where I will be teaching how to shoot, how I shoot. Um, I might I might show how I edit, even though it's not something that I, I'm charging for, because again, I don't think I'm knowledgeable enough to teach other people how to edit. I'll just show you how I edit my images 
so that they came up the way the way they came up. Um, and then on my workshops, I also want to. I also I'm also going to talk talking about the business side of it. I'm going to be talking about the uh, uh, the upselling, the the potential of, of of how good it is for your business. I'm going to be talking about Imagine also. Um, people, I want future wedding photographers. I don't want them to spend hours and hours and hours like I did for so many years in a bat cave, not living and just editing. You know, because when you when you use Imagine, you're also making money. You don't realize it. If if you if you if you talk about numbers, let's say after you shoot a full day wedding, I'm going to throw a number. After expenses paid, taxes, your staff, whatever, you have a profit of three thousand dollars, right? Just as an example, uh, takes you a week to edit a wedding plus the 14 hour shooting. So that's seven days. Let's put eight days. Total of eight days. So you made three thousand dollars in eight days. Pretty good. Three thousand dollars in eight days is pretty good. Uh, once you run it through Imagine, you just edit a full wedding in a couple of hours. So you made three thousand dollars in two hours instead of a week. <laughs> I want people to know this. This is yeah. now. Now you can spend that extra time advertising your brand, building your brand, growing your brand, spending time with your family, which is so important, right? Yeah, for uh, sure. So I'm going to be talking about that in my workshops too. Well, thank you so much for for you know hopping on, chatting with me. Uh, sharing your workflows with everybody. Um, it's, You're so uh, welcome. Yeah, I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you so much, Braulio, for that fantastic conversation. I'm so sorry that your daughter is going through an ear infection, and but it was really nice to be able to, uh, you know, you were able to give her that affection, that love while we were recording. Um, I know it was a little bit distracting for, for both of us, but we made it work. And uh, yeah, I, I there's a bunch of great takeaways here. Thank you again for taking the time for, uh, for chatting with me and for sharing your knowledge with all of the Imaginers listening to this episode. You have been listening to Workflows presented by Imagine. To hear more from Workflows and to find a link to our guest, please go to imagine-ai.com slash podcast. Be a part of the conversation by joining the Imagine community at imagine-ai.com slash community. And be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time.